Chapter 7. Visualize Real-Time SQC Alarms Our visualization tool for alarms is Pi Alarm View. Now here's a demonstration of Pi Alarm View. As you can see, I've got a couple of SQC tags that I'm looking at. Um, it's in a category called SQC. I'm currently looking at the historical values and right now I see one tag that is outside control and here we go another one another tag has just gone outside control now I'm looking at here not just the current values that are in alarm but also the history of what has happened for these tags and I've done that because I've currently turned on this logger feature if you notice if you turn this off you're simply going to see the current values but you can turn on logger and then specify an interval of time I'll go back one day for example apply and now it's going to go back and show me not only the current values but also the historical values for these tags. Now I'm choosing just the SQC tags to look at now but you can also do this for other what are known as alarm groups. The alarm groups are groups that we've built so that we can have some mechanism for navigating through the different alarming areas in, uh, in this particular unit. So I've chosen to create an alarm group for SQC tags and I've done that in the Pi system management tools. So if we take a look over here at the alarm groups section in system management tools, you'll notice that I have an SQC alarms group and I've got this HF1 that has a number of children groups underneath of it, these units one through five. These correspond exactly to what you see over here in these units which again I can drill down through and for my SQC alarm units. Now this, you'll notice it's not the name but that's the actual descriptor that I used when I created that alarm uh, group. I would mentioned earlier that the alarm groups that you see listed here, those groups and subgroups, as well as the SQC alarm group, those are created using the alarm group manager in Pi SMT3. So let's go ahead and create one. This is the alarm group manager. I'll select the Pi server. I'll add a group. Now you are restricted to having groups that have no spaces in them. So this cannot have any spaces in it. Let's call this SQC Alarms 2. Now the descriptor is actually uh, what you're going to see in the alarm viewer. So if I set this up as alarm group 2 as the descriptor, you'll notice that we're using that in the alarm view tool. So we now have two here and it's going to take it's on a cycle so it's going to take a minute or so for that new alarm group to come up here but it will show up automatically. I'll go ahead and pause the video and join us when we see this come up. Okay, the uh, I just unpaused the recording and you can see right here alarm group 2 has now appeared. It's on about a two minute cycle. Uh, that alarm group of course is now ready to make use of. I can go ahead and create alarm tags and then associate those with that alarm group. Now if I wanted to specify a subgroup within here, I just simply select the group that will be the parent and add a subgroup. I'll call this subgroup 1. And again you'll notice it is the descriptors that show up in the alarm viewer. So again let me pause. Okay now I've unpaused and as you can see I now have this a subgroup and we're looking at the descriptors for each. If I had simply exited out of alarm view and come back in I wouldn't have had to wait for the update. If you have many different Pi servers of course you can monitor all of them through here. I only have a single server but if I wanted to show more well first I would go into file connections and make sure that I do have uh, the connections available that I'm interested in. I'll go ahead and connect to this server and then within the view menu there's an option here called displayed servers. Now that opens up a pane that you see down at the bottom and I can go ahead and specify by selecting this that I would like this to be a displayed server as well. Now you'll notice that's forcing this to go out and search for alarms. This is a fairly involved server so there's going to be a lot of alarms. It's going to take a little bit of time to retrieve all that but when we're finished what I should see is a brand new server listed here and I should be able to drill down through the hierarchy of this server. Yeah, here we can see the progress bar. It's parsing out all the alarms. And here's the results. So I can go through now and manage multiple 
Pi servers through this um, through this right here. The alarms are color coded, so if you notice, we've got these red and yellow. It represents uh, priority three and priority two. And incidentally, the priorities are not in the order you may think. Uh, from our point of view, a priority that's got a larger number is a higher priority. So the highest priority in uh, in the alarm view supports is a priority three, which is blinking blinking red here. So we uh, we have those different priorities. You can change the color coding by going into tools, options, and appearance, and this is where you can set the priorities. Now in addition, we have a priority zero. A priority zero is for an alarm that uh, has not been assigned specifically a priority. Now in addition, you'll notice that you can configure sounds to go with these alarms. So for example, here are the different priorities. Here are the different WAV files. You can go out and browse uh, only for WAV files for this. And uh, of course, you can control uh, how many times we play it, uh, whether we play it until it's acknowledged, etc. Now you'll notice that the alarm viewer is broken into panes. These panes are other well, panes that are dockable or not. I can double click on them to uh, take them off of where they're normally docked. The uh, over on the the left hand side, you'll see a pane that is the tree structure that allows us to navigate through different servers and through different uh, alarm groups. So, for example, my alarm group two, which I just created previously, has a test subgroup, and I can navigate through these. In this case, of course, I have no alarms configured for those. Now, this particular tag, the, this particular alarm group, test for SQC class, is showing that I do have one outside of control. And also, since I've decided that I would like to show normal values, we're actually seeing a, a value that's not in alarm. It's just showing me all those, w whether they're in alarm or not. And you'll notice that that's something you can do within tools and options. You can control whether you show the normal values or just show the alarm values. Now, when I do show an alarm, there's a whole set of information that we know about the alarm just by looking at this panel. Uh, you can see the alarm condition. You can see the alarm priority. Right now, this is a priority of zero. If we look at some of our other tags, it says priority three, priority two. We can also specify that we'd like to make a comment. So by clicking on there, I can either type in a comment, this is a comment, or I can specify a reason code. So the reason code would be retrieved from a reason code database that you'll find is part of AlarmView. AlarmView does allow you to keep track of these reason codes so that, uh, well, so that there are a finite number of things that people can assign. So I can choose either a regular comment, type in a comment, or I can look at the reason code. And as you can see, it shows up when I look at that. We can see also the start time of the alarm, the end time of the alarm. The end meaning the, uh, the point at which it was, you know, the alarm uh, situation was over. And then also something called the uh, sequence start. In the history of an alarm state, there is a certain sequence that uh, it's going to start uh, the alarm sequence, or excuse me, start from a zero state where it's not an alarm through the different states of that particular sequence. For example, if something is not an alarm and then goes into alarm, is later on acknowledged and then goes out of alarm, well, that's the entire sequence. And this is telling us what the sequence start is for this particular alarm, which in this case is the same as the start of the alarm period itself. Now, finally, there is a, an option called extra information. And this is where you can specify uh, things like a website that would be invoked uh, when you click on this extra information. Now that's actually something that can be configured by going into this SQC alarm and configuring this as extra information right here. So I can specify a website and then using the user interface, when I click on extra information, it'll take me to that website. Now, over on the right-hand side, there is the option to show the alarm properties. That's actually something you can turn on and off by choosing View Alarm Properties. I'll go ahead and turn it back on. When I select an alarm, you can see all the things associated with that alarm. You know, so, for example, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the extra info would be, this is where we can both see and uh, enter. 
a website and uh, that particular website would be invoked from the user interface. But this is where we can see other things about this alarm. We can see things like the alarm group it belongs to, the digital state set that it uses, uh, its current condition, the condition of the source value, what the source tag is. These are those things that are associated with each of these SQC alarms or any of these alarms. Uh, here we can see the tags that make represent the control limits, uh, etc. When working with alarms, if you have an alarm trigger and it is an alarm that requires acknowledgement, but it goes out of alarm before it is acknowledged, then at that point we consider it a missed alarm. You can acknowledge an alarm by selecting it and just choosing acknowledge. And when you do that, of course, uh, what you'll see is that in the alarm view interface, it, uh, it no longer is blinking. So as you can see, this is no longer blinking there. There's a history search that's available, and it is available on a tag-by-tag -tag basis where you can select multiple tags. So for example, I've selected my SQC alarm. I can choose Tools, History Search, or I can just click on this there's a History Search button right here. And this is, as you can see, it's selecting what tag or tags I've selected, and now I can specify the search criteria. So for example, if I go back for eight hours, and search, I can see a lot of search results for this particular uh, this particular tag. Now let me turn off these properties so that we can see this a little bit more detail. There we go. Here's my history. And I can see what the value was, what the timestamp was, and if there were any comments. Now again, I've turned off some of these panes. I can turn those back on by choosing View and look at the properties again, look at the displayed servers, etc. And I think I'll turn off the history results and go back to my current view. When searching through history, you can also search for certain priorities, alarm conditions, or acknowledgement statuses. So for example, this tag right here, My Alarm 3, I can search for its history, but more than just specifying the start and the end time, I can filter based on a, an alarm condition, an alarm priority, or an acknowledgement status. So for example, I'd like to find all those alarms whose status is missed. And by choosing search, this is going out and doing exactly that. We're finding from that period of time, this is a missed alarm here. Now, you know, compare that to doing raw search results, we're going to see all those values, not just the ones that were missed. And that can be done for any of these, as I said, condition, which would be the alarm state like high, high, low, uh, low, low, etc. And in the case of the SQC alarms, in the case of the SQC alarms, we would be seeing not the high, high, and low, low, but things like outside control, uh, stratified, trend, etc.